this kind of builds on questions that have already been asked, but what are your favorite moments from any voice acting that you've done? And how would you make a Transformers cartoon? How would I make a Transformers cartoon? How, how would, would you I make do it? one? How would you do it? Like, how would you have the characters? How would you have the story? Just off oh, the top of your head. Oh, I see what you're saying. If, it, like, if, if a new episode, if a new uh, iteration were to happen. Yeah, if a new iteration were to happen. Gosh. Well, see, we're not writers, <clears throat> and we're not animators. We merely pretend to be other people. <laughs> it, it, what we do for a living is kind of glorified playing cops and robbers. <laughs> Um, so uh, it, it's kind of an odd question. I can't imagine I what I would do if you know if I were to to, to dream up a new uh, Transformers episode. Like say you'd voice Meg. Like say you finally get to voice Megatron. Oh well, um, you know, gosh, that's it. It is sort of what it is, you know. And uh, I, I, I guess I can't really imagine what it might have been if if it had been cast differently or if. No. Uh, there were to be a new iteration of it. I know people are talking about it's time for a Beast Wars live action movie. <laughs> and I'm sure both oh, of yeah. us would be very enthused about that. Yeah. Yeah, we'd be enthused about the Beast Wars movie. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you that, the live action one. But, but somebody but, who actually writes would have to write it. <laughs> <laughs> and I'd, I'd love another director. Uh, uh, I'd love a director like the guy who directed Robocop. Right. Uh, what's his name? The Dutchman, huh? Paul Verhoeven. Now, can you imagine Paul Verhoeven directing Transformers? Now, this is the guy who did Robocop, Soldier of Orange. He did a lot of great movies. And he was a, he was a very nice guy, too. So, Paul Verhoeven directing Transformers would be quite amazing. And if, as, in answer to your question, um, what Richard said is exactly right. We're, we're voicers, we're not writers. But if I had a, a say, what I would like to see is uh, a bit more uh, moral ambiguity. Because what happens in the cartoon is they're all archetypes, right? So they're bad or they're good. But I would like to see that there, at some point that some of the good characters do something that's not quite kosher. And I'd like to see some of the bad guys do something that's not quite evil. Coming soon to Cartoon Network, huh? Transformers The Lost Light. I can't hear you. <clears throat> yeah, because, because it's all a matter of perspective. No bad guy sees themselves as evil. Every character, every person sees themselves as a good guy. You know, what? What? I'm, I'm dealing drugs. I got to make a living. <laughs> you know? I'm a killer. It's what I do. But I don't say, oh, I'm so evil. I'm evil. <laughs> they don't do that. They don't do that. And that's what I would like to see, a little bit of, a little bit of that ambiguity to create a more seems to me a more interesting dynamic. Well, that was what was interesting about characters like Dinobot and um, exactly Black right. Arachnia, you know. who, who kind of were, with, had one foot in each of the worlds. And, and I know that Scott and Venus both had fun kind of playing those, those conflicting uh, dynamics. I love Black Arachnia. I hate you. I love you. I hate you. I love you. I hate you. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> Kind of like my wife sometimes. No. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, there you go. That's that's my answer. Well, to answer my other question, can you give me can you give us one other time that you really remember or liked during your voice acting? Well, um, I play Franklin the Turtle's father, and um, I had gone to Toronto to do a production of Angels in America, playing the most evil character in the history of American politics, a lawyer by the name of Roy Cohn. So I was playing this horrific character at night, and once the show had opened, I called the various studios around Toronto to say, okay, I'm a voice actor, I'm in town for the next six months, and you know, if anything comes up. So this Nelvana called me in, 
And the, uh, the casting director said, oh, I know you. You play this and this and this and this. And I went, wow, she's been doing her homework. But you're wrong for this, she said. Because what they knew me for was, do not fail me. And that's not exactly Franklin the Turtle's father, you know. <laughs> but they called me in to meet the folks. And I, I uh, had, my daughter was just under a year old at this point. I had no idea what to do with this character. So I just pretended I was talking to my kid. And I got the gig. And 65 episodes later, and then a couple of three or four hour-long specials, and then CGI came out, and they went, oh, let's do another 52. So there's several hundred half hours of Franklin out there, and the show made me a better father. Uh, and uh, so I'm very grateful to that, for sure. But Franklin's so cute. Yes. We love Franklin. I got nothing. <laughs> <laughs>